we're in Frankfurt at the Paulskirche giving away the Kendall Prize for Young Neuroscientists. And on the panel, there is Mark Soames, directly from Capstadt, from South Africa. And Mark Soames is one of a rare kind, being one of not so many Freudian neuroscientists, that you can say. <laughs> How come? Well, um, many people don't know that Freud was himself a neuroscientist. Um, between the late uh, 1870s and 1900, which is over 20 years, he published many neuroscientific papers. Um, he was uh, involved in uh, elucidating the structure of the neuron. Um, he traced some basic pathways. He traced the origin of the acoustic nerve, for example. Um, and then he went on to become a clinical neurologist and became interested in neuro, what's now called neuropsychology. He wrote a very important book on um, the disorders of language, the aphasias, uh, language disorders caused by brain disease. And um, he then became interested in more complex aspects of the mind. And it was only because there were no neuroscientific methods available those days that he became uh, what is now called psychoanalyst, that he started to use purely psychological methods. So actually, the, the, although you're quite right to say that I'm one of uh, a rare uh, breed of psychoanalysts who remain interested in the brain, actually there's more continuity uh, there than there might appear to be. I think that now that we do have the sorts of techniques and methods um, that were not available in Freud's day. We owe it to our forebears, people like Freud. We owe it to them to explore those same questions uh, using the best methods that we have available today. So that's what I'm doing. What do you think he was right on? Freud was right about many things um, in very broad brushstrokes. For example, um, the very idea that we as humans are just a species of animal and uh, therefore they must be operating in our brains just as in all other animals. They must be drives, instincts, primitive motivational forces, um, biological universals that unite us all. Um, the, 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 the instincts and drives that Freud identified in detail um, are of course not correct. Uh, but the very fact that they are instincts and drives which motivate us like any other animal. Um, the other very broad way in which Freud was right was to in, uh, realize that many mental functions, in fact, most of our mental functioning is not conscious, that consciousness is just a very small part of what the mind does. Um, also, Freud was right in his focus on development, on recognizing that what happens to the brain early on in life sets the agenda, lays the foundations, which are very hard to shift um, for what comes later. Um, I could then go into further detail on many different topics. Um, I'll choose just one that has been a particular research interest of my own, which is the, 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 the function of dreaming. Freud was always interested in dreams because he believed that they revealed something of those primitive uh, animal parts of our minds, uh, the instinctual part, and also that they revealed something of the motivations which are unconscious. And again, although in many details Freud was not right about um, how dreams work, in, in the basic uh, fundamentals, um, the latest neuroscientific findings uh, confirm those basics for example, that those instinctual parts of the brain are highly activated during dreaming sleep. Um, and that there's every reason to believe that you will learn something about the deeper motivational uh, forces of uh, the sleeper by looking at the content of their dreams. So, um, as I say, I mentioned that as just one example, but uh, I could enumerate several others. I think the important thing is to remember that what we are doing today is not trying to prove Freud right or wrong, but rather to complete the job. But uh, I would guess he was quite out for some years. Freud was very fashionable um, in the first half of the 20th century. 
he dominated particularly American psychiatry uh, completely. But then from the 50s onwards, uh, he gradually became less and less fashionable. And I think that um, that we have to blame as much on the psychoanalysts as on anyone else, because they uh, sort of clung to those original theories and saw them as some kind of truth like you would find in a Bible, uh, rather than seeing them as hypotheses which uh, must be tested by whatever methods are available. But Woody Allen kept him alive. Woody Allen kept him alive, yes. <laughs> It's interesting that Eric Kandel started his career being interested in Freudian psychoanalysis. Yes. Um, what do you two talk about tonight? Well, it remains to be seen what we're going to talk about. Um, I'm as interested as anybody. We haven't scripted it. We haven't made any um, prior uh, arrangements as to what we're going to say. So it will, it will all be up for grabs. Okay, and at the dinner? At the dinner, we'll tell jokes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mr. Thorne. Thank you very much. Don't forget that Freud also taught us that there are many true thoughts that lie behind jokes. Okay, I will. <laughs> Thank you.